All right, my dear Bible and 365 brothers and sisters, we have arrived at the end times book of 1 Thessalonians. And yes, that will also be the case with 2 Thessalonians. Now, a lot of people look at these books and don't think that they really relate to end times, although they are significantly important for the subject of end times, particularly the rapture of the church. And in the case of 2 Thessalonians, the Antichrist that's coming. Now, there's a lot here, and I think it's really important for us to go over it. So what I'd like to actually do is go through some of the areas that I want you to pay attention to in this book, but the areas that I really want to emphasize are going to be chapter 4 and chapter 5. So briefly, let's get into chapters 1, 2, and 3. Of course, 1, 2, and 3 is really simple, right? It speaks about the uh, importance of the church and how God uses the church in order to minister to not only itself as the body, but to the people around itself, right? And so it talks about the fact that the church should be a model for the rest of the world, should wait for the Lord, as of course, this is something that we hear a lot. And of course, the church should be effective because it has power that can only be given by the Lord himself. And so we're going to get through this in 1 Thessalonians 1 and 2 and 3. And what is interesting is we are going to get a series of instructions, for example, in chapter two, that help us to kind of steer clear of those areas that might keep us away from experiencing all that God has for us, right? Like, for example, we're told that even when you're persecuted, even when it's tough, even when it's hard, you've got to be people who are willing to preach the gospel, right? You've got to walk away from lying and deceit and the type of motives that would, uh, you know, be impure, right? He talks about that. He talks about the idea of the real motive we should be having is to please God, right? He talks about uh, not manipulating, using flattery type terms and so on and so forth, and uh, not to be a burden in essence, unnecessarily speaking, right? And um, it's interesting because he doesn't say love is love, like the world is saying in this context, but he does talk about ministering in love, God is love. And so it's a very different picture from anything we're being told uh, by the world. And then he tells us to do this. He tells us to encourage. He tells us to console or comfort. And he tells us to make appeals or to urge. And it's something that is very, very important for us. Now, when we get into chapter four, I want you to pay attention to the end of chapter four, specifically starting in verse 13, where he talks about the rapture of the church. This is very, very important, and he wants to prepare us for something that is spectacular and something we should be excited about. And at the end of chapter 4, he tells us to comfort one another with these words. So how can you comfort one another if you don't know the words that relate to the rapture uh, of the church? And it's great stuff. And then in chapter 5, especially in the beginning, I want you to pay attention because in the beginning of chapter 5, he is going to tell us that the coming of the Lord will be as a thief in the night, but we are not walking in darkness. And he wants us to do what? He wants us to watch and to be sober. And that's a very important thing, right? Because think about it. If you are not sober, yet you're watching, what you're actually watching isn't going to mean anything, right? And the whole idea behind maintaining sobriety has nothing to do with alcohol, although I absolutely hate alcohol. It has everything to do with steering clear of sin because the number one thing that will cause inebriation in a believer's life or anybody's life for that matter is sin. So steer clear from that sin, choose to keep your eyes on Jesus and your awareness and discernment and sharpness concerning his eminent return will grow. And that's something we should all be excited about. There we are, folks. I cannot believe we are getting close to the end of October. You are doing a great job. See you as we get to 2 Thessalonians. God bless you guys.